As I spoke to Tony Ferguson last week, and he said that Habib should be stripped. I don't think Habib should be stripped. I think that's a crazy notion. In this time, everyone's, everyone's decision should be respected. If Habib yes. felt like being at home as a dad, as a husband, as a son is what he needed to do at this time, he should not only be respected for that, he should be applauded for that. This is the time to be selfish for your family. So all of us and our opinions don't matter. And I really think that he doesn't deserve like the hate that he's getting and all this stuff. But c- can I just say this as, as a, as an innocent bystander from a PR perspective, he botched this. He totally botched it. All wow. he had to do, all he had to do was come out and say like, I went home, they told me to go home and now I'm going to stay with my family because I feel more comfortable. Last Monday comes out and says, I went to Abu Dhabi. I couldn't get in. Now I'm home and I can't get out. Right. Then on Wednesday, he's like, Hey, I'm not the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Don't get mad at me. I'm staying home because I have to stay home. And then that was it. And then on Thursday, after the Ferguson interview, he comes out and goes, just send me location. Just tell me where to go. Well, but- stop, look- stop looking at the hate. Stop reacting to everyone. You keep he changing never- the message. But here's the deal, though, right? He never said he wouldn't fight. He said, initially, I went to right. do what was told. I was going there to fight. Then I got stuck in Russia. I can't leave. They're saying I can't leave. People started saying there's a way for him to go fight. He's saying, send me where to go and I'll go fight, right? So it's like, I, I understand you say it's a, it was botch uh, in terms of PR, but was it? I think, I think really that you saw a person, right, dealing with something that bothered him, right? Habib doesn't want it. Feel pe- people saying he's running or he's afraid of Tony. You got as transparent, as much transparency from a fighter as you will get from anybody because mm-hmm. you're essentially going through his thoughts with him, but he's just making them public. All the things that he would have probably said to Islam, his dad, everybody, like, uh, tell me where to fight and I'll go. He's saying it. If he's like, well, I'm stuck here. Like, I can't, I can't go back. He's just saying it, right? So he's just essentially being open and honest with everybody. Like, he was very clear that – he went there. He didn't have to tell that story. Telling that story that they told him he could go to Abu Dhabi and fight, and then it backfired, that could make the UFC look bad, right? Because they gave him bad information. He left California on their, uh, on their, on them telling him to go there. And it was like, so he, he's telling you things that he could have held close to the chest because he doesn't want, Dabib has a great relationship with the UFC. So it's like, he was just, at every step, he was just open and honest, and maybe, maybe he shouldn't have been. But people always talk about fighters don't want to be open with him. He was open. You saw his thought process as it played out. And if it didn't work in terms of a public relations uh, on that, that side of things, then too bad. But you got to see him making a decision or trying to make a decision right in front of your eyes. You know what? It's a very fair point. And we almost can't hold people to the same standards as we would under normal circumstances because it's such a confusing time. So yeah. I, I'm all for transparency. I, I want more people to be honest, even if it, you know, may come across a little weird. There. So, so you're right. You know what? Listen, I'm, I'm mad enough to say, I'm just saying from a distance, it was confusing, yeah. right? Every no, day it was, was a different message. Confusing. But you're right. This is a guy who's probably dealing with a lot. It's a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. And he's getting all these messages probably being like, you duck, you, you can't make weight. You're looking for an excuse. It, it, hey, and you're it's talking about that. It'll fight. He'll fight anywhere. That right. dude will fight right. Tony Ferguson anywhere, right? Like, he'll fight him anywhere. I, I know Habib. There was one time we were wrestling in the gym, and I was like, wrestle me. He was like, no, you, you're big. I don't feel good. And I kind of clubbed him behind the neck, and I hurt his neck a little bit. He was like, ah, my neck. You know, like, hey, dude got up. He was ready to fight with me. Me. No. The rest of the Russians all kind of circle around me, you know, and I was like, oh my goodness, maybe I shouldn't hit him so hard. But he was like, he's not gonna, he's not afraid of anybody. He'll fight me, he'll fight Miocic, he'll fight Jones, he will fight every guy up and down the roster. Dude is not afraid of anyone. So to 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 say that is uh it's it's absurd. And I know that he really cares about fans. So he's probably reading this, he's probably reading those things, you know, and hearing all that. So at every turn he tried to explain away something that people really don't deserve. You don't, like, if, if when you're questioning a fighter, we can't, we can't try to give you uh, comfort in your thoughts along the way. You get point A, you get point Z, wherever we finish. You get A, you get Z. That whole journey in between, 
that's between the people in the middle. And I think he tried to keep everybody in the loop at every single turn and that backfired on. I'll never forget um, after the brawl in Las Vegas, uh, he it was crazy. It was an insane seeing him, Connor and all that. You were the one that was able to calm him down almost, right? Like you were mm-hmm. the captain. He, he mm-hmm. listens to you. In the midst of all of this, is he asking you for advice, how to handle all this? You know, Ariel, the other day when he put that message up, I got on Instagram and I messaged him because I know that he usually is on his phone there. I said, hey, I need to talk to you. This was uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe 2.30, right? 2.35, I get a call from Khabib, Russia. It's what I have in his phone, right? He has his American phone. He has his Russian phone. He's on FaceTime. I was like, yo, what's going on? I was like, are you out? Like, I was, are you out? And he's like, uh, why? Why do you say this? Why do you say I'm out? I go, because the message you just posted sounds like you're pulling out of the fight. And he was like, no, brother, I'm not saying this. He had just finished. I mean, dude wasn't even, dude still in the sauna. He was literally, st- and, and if you go to Russia, in those saunas, there's the sauna, then there's tables where you drink tea and all that stuff. It's kind of like a, a whole deal, you know? He was still at the sauna. It was 11 o'clock at night. He was still doing his work. He told me exactly what he weighed. He told me he could make the weight and go fight, but he doesn't know where the fight is. And that was what, what was most frustrating in the Habib was like, he just had no idea. Like, where is the fight? Everybody's talking about a fight, but like, where is the fight? And that was pretty much it. But we spoke for, you know, 30, 45 minutes. And he, uh, you know, he just was like, no, brother, I'm not out of the fight. I just want to know where the fight is. And then, you know, the next day he talked to uh, uh, Okamoto and uh, told him some stuff too. And then, you know, then Dana came on and said that he was out of the fight. So, I I mean, I don't don't know what happened between him and I speaking to – that that decision i don't know what do you say about his weight how much is way between us <laughs> this is not between <laughs> us <laughs> what do you think are you freaking crazy thank you for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus